OCDIY. Stay safe and have fun. Welcome to another video from rcdiy.ca. In this video, we're going to look at the Tyrannus QX7 shipped with OpenTX 2.2. This transmitter arrives with the gimbals spring-loaded, so both gimbals are self-centering when it arrives. You need to take apart the transmitter and adjust a couple of screws to remove the tension on the gimbals so that you can convert it to mode 2 or mode 1 if you prefer. Whilst doing this conversion, be very careful of the module bay pins as they go through a very narrow slot and can be easily damaged. You remove the spring tension by loosening the screw shown and then you increase the friction by tightening two screws. How far you tighten those screws is of personal preference. So tighten them till you like the feel. Once again, when putting the cover back on, be very careful of the module bay pins. The transmitter arrived with an 800 milliampere hour battery. I chose to use rechargeable AA batteries instead since they have a 2000 milliampere hour capacity. So now that we've changed the gimbal to be mode 1, we power on the transmitter. You may get some warnings such as throttle not idle. There's two ways to clear this. Either you press one of the keys marked page, exit, or the one in between, or you move the throttle stick all the way down. Now, if the mode of your gimbals doesn't match the mode that's already programmed into the transmitter, moving the throttle stick down may or may not clear the warning, in which case you just hit the exit key. There may or may not be some more warnings, such as fail safe not set, in which place you can clear those warnings by pressing the exit key. When you get to the screen that shows the model name on it, this is the main view. So the first thing we're going to do is check that the software is programmed to be mode 2 as well, just like the gimbals. If you've done your gimbals to be mode 1, we will check the software accordingly. So this key over here between page and exit is the menu key. Press the menu key and keep it pressed until the screen radio setup is displayed. You now use this knob on the right to select different fields. You keep turning the knob until we get to the mode setting. So when you get to the mode setting, you can press the button in the center of the knob. This is the enter key. Once you press the button, you can turn the knob to select the different modes. Once you've got the desired mode, press enter again and that will save your setting. You now press exit and you press exit again to get back to the main view. The receiver we're going to bind today is an X4R and according to the documentation the mode of its operation is D16. So you power on the transmitter and you press exit to clear any warnings that show up. By default the transmitter is supplied with a with a model already configured channel 1 for throttle chan channel 
two for ailerons, channel three for elevator and channel four for rudder. So to bind the model, press menu and then press page and then use the knob to scroll down till you get to the mode field. Press enter and then turn the knob to select the desired mode. And then press enter again to save your selection. For the first time, when you bind a receiver, the software assigns the receiver a number. In my case, I already have my receivers numbered, so I change the number in the software accordingly. So you place the transmitter into bind mode first, and then you place the receiver into bind mode by pressing on the FS button and then powering it on. There's an LED that turns on and it's green. Once that happens, you can disconnect power to the transmitter and you can exit bind mode on the transmitter. Next, you need to make sure you set your failsafe. I like to have my failsafe set on the receiver, so I select receiver as the option for the failsafe. To set the failsafe on the receiver, power on the receiver with the transmitter power on as well. With the receiver on, if it is bound correctly, there will be a green LED. Set your throttle to zero and then press on the FS key on the receiver. Now we can test the control surfaces, follow the correct directions from the transmitter. In this example over here, we notice that the ailerons are going in the wrong direction, so we're going to have to correct that. So you need to go to the output screen where we're going to ch change the output direction. So you scroll down to the aileron channel, which is channel 2 and you move the aileron stick and you notice the signal that's going out up there in microseconds. You now change the direction of the output and then check the throws again. Now the ailerons are going in the correct direction. To test failsafe, give a little bit of throttle and then turn off the transmitter. The throttle should go back to zero. So conducting a range check before your first flight is very important. Place your transmitter into range check mode and walk 30 paces away and then check that you can still fully control your model. When that is done, come back to your model 
exit to range check mode and now you're ready for your first flight. This video is accompanied by a blog post whose link can be found in the description below. To support this channel, please like, subscribe and follow the links below.